we need to talk about what's going on with the Tesla 4680 battery cell. This is the first battery cell exclusively designed and manufactured by Tesla. And in theory, this was done with the objective of creating a high performance and high efficiency nickel based battery cell that would be exceptionally cost efficient to manufacture at extremely high volumes in a very short amount of time. And after two years of anticipation and speculation, that much hyped new battery technology finally arrived in a Tesla production vehicle to a great amount of fanfare, which was quickly followed by an equal amount of confusion. Look, I'll be honest here. A lot of things we reported about the 4680 over the last couple of years did not come true, or at least have not yet been proven to be true within the time frame that we would have expected. So instead of just shrugging that off or pretending like it never happened, let's go ahead and dive into the Tesla 4680 battery expectations versus realities and do our best to figure out exactly what's going on here, because I think I've finally arrived at a reasonable answer. Let's start off with the initial premise of the 4680, information which we and so many of our Tesla YouTube peers have been repeating since battery day in fall 2020. The 4680 is Tesla's next generation battery cell technology, a design that would check all of the boxes in terms of what we would imagine as the perfect EV battery, increased performance, decreased cost with easier and faster manufacturing at scale. At 46 millimeters in diameter by 80 millimeters in length, this was the biggest cylindrical battery cell ever presented, about five times larger than Tesla's standard 2170 battery cell, while also containing five times the amount of energy storage. So equal density, even with the massive size difference, that's fairly impressive. Then six times the amount of power output, which is very impressive given that inside a traditional cylindrical cell, the longer the roll of the electrode material is, the more resistance is built up and the harder it is to get the energy out of the cell. Tesla defied this with a brand new tabless electrode design. Instead of directing all of the electrons through a single metal tab, the entire electrode sheet was perforated so that hundreds of tiny shingle-like tabs could be folded over onto each other and allow the free flow of energy across a massive surface area of the electrode. According to the infamous slide deck that is now burned into our minds, the new 4680 design would also promise a range increase of 16% when implemented into a Tesla vehicle. And in addition to that, Tesla had invented this amazing new structural battery pack that replaced the entire central frame section of the vehicle with an ultra rigid combination of these giant new cells sandwiched between two sheets of metal and filled with a structural adhesive. This would again increase the efficiency of the vehicle manufacturing, lower the cost, and result in a more rigid vehicle with better handling, higher crash safety, and most impressively, combine with the new cell efficiency to render out 30% more total range as compared to a standard Tesla vehicle in 2020. Sounds absolutely fantastic as a consumer, of course. I want a car with all of those things. More range, more power, battery safety, and with the promise that it could all come at a lower price? Why, thank you, Elon. Let's go. Tesla promised that by using this very impressive manufacturing process that they called high-speed continuous motion assembly, that they would just be firing these things out in the near future. 10 gigawatt hours annual run rate by 2021, 100 gigawatt hour capacity in 2022, three terawatt hours per year by 2030. Are you tired of drinking the same old coffee day after day? Are you ready to upgrade your coffee game and become a true coffee lover? Well, look no further than Trade Coffee. Trade Coffee is a coffee subscription service that partners with the top rated independent roasters in the nation to bring you the best quality coffee around. Their coffee experts handpick each and every coffee so you can trust that you're getting the best of the best. I'm a big fan of espresso and recently tried out a few of Trade's blends, Monkey Bite, Mind Tonic, and Eye of the Tiger. I have to say, Mind Tonic was by far my favorite 
every time I opened the bag, the aroma was incredible, and every cup was just as amazing. Now, I'm not a coffee snob, but I was so impressed that I've already re-upped my subscription for Mind Tonic and upgraded to the two-pound bag to save money by buying in bulk. Monkey Bite and Eye of the Tiger were fantastic as well, but Mind Tonic was just a 12 out of 10 experience that I really recommend. Whether you're a coffee connoisseur or just starting to explore the world of specialty coffee, Trade makes it easy and convenient to discover new and exciting flavors. They'll send it fresh to your door on your preferred schedule, so why wait? Upgrade your morning routine with Trade Coffee and start your day off right, and as a special offer for our viewers, Trade is offering a free bag of coffee with any subscription at drinktrade.com slash teslaspace. Don't miss out on this amazing opportunity to become a true coffee lover. I want to introduce you to something called the Gartner Hype Cycle. This is one of those classic examples of just how derivative and predictable human psychology really is. As soon as a new technology is introduced, it will quickly gain a lot of visibility, aka hype, over a very short period of time as everyone is eager to learn about the new product and discuss with their friends, while those of us in the media are quick to jump in with our own take and drive the visibility higher and higher until we reach an entirely unrealistic fever pitch of hysteria. And that's where we were at around the end of 2021, about one year post-battery day, the peak of inflated expectations. At this point, we had created an image in our minds that no legitimate product could ever live up to. So when the reality of the situation finally strikes, that mass hysteria gets knocked down pretty fast. So welcome my friends to the trough of disillusionment. In the first half of 2022, Tesla finally unleashed on the world their Model Y equipped with 4680 battery cells in a structural pack with dual giga castings, the exact configuration that we had promised would be the greatest vehicle of all time. I think I literally said that this would be the best car in the world. What we got was not quite what we had expected. I'm not saying like Game of Thrones season 8 level of disappointment, but it was very apparently underwhelming. A new standard range Model Y with dual motor all wheel drive, 279 miles of range on 19 inch wheels and 0 to 60 in 5 seconds flat. Not a bad car by any means, but coming off the peak of inflated expectations, literally anything short of the best car in the world was enough to knock the wind out of every Tesla fanboy and send us tumbling deep down the trough in which we now reside. And let's be honest, it was a rough fall from grace. I even remember some otherwise very intelligent Tesla media figures that were working overtime to come up with a rationalization as to why the specs were not more impressive, even going so far as to confidently state that the car actually had much more range available from the battery pack than what was being stated, but it had just been nerfed in software to make it appear less desirable as to not trigger an Osborne effect. And then someday in the future, Tesla would sound out a firmware update that would unlock the vehicle's hidden potential like a Dragon Ball Z character. That was not the case. It took Sandy Monroe literally tearing the vehicle apart and pulling its guts out, followed by a series of laboratory testing to conclude that the 4680s and structural pack in their current form do not render out a 30% increase in range. In fact, they provide you with less range, and Tesla still charges more or less the same price as the older car with the longer range. So thanks, Elon? But now we have to turn to the limiting factor for some hard numbers here. This dude bought one of the 4680 cells that Sandy Monroe eviscerated from the Model Y and then sent it off to a lab for testing. Here's what was found. The cell level energy density of the 4680 is about 244 watt hours per kilogram, which is not a bad result, but it is a lesser performance than the 2170 battery cell that has been in circulation for years now. Those have around 263 watt hours per kilogram. The old 18650 cells that are still used in the Model S and Model X punch even higher with 280 watt hours per kilogram. Now, as we can see from that trend, the larger a battery cell gets, the lower the energy density, and 
That is normal, but our expectations got the better of us and we assumed that the 4680 would defy traditional limitations. It does not, or not right now at least. And also thanks to Sandy and his team revealing the complete inner workings of the 4680 pack, it's been calculated that the pack level energy density of the new Model Y is around 160 watt hours per kilogram. That's a little more difficult to say confidently, but give or take that number should be pretty close. And that's compared to 180 watt hours per kilogram in the long range Model Y pack with 2170 cells. So even though the new 4680 Model Y does have a slightly smaller total pack size, 71.6 kilowatts versus 82 kilowatts of total battery volume, not usable volume, that's total installed volume, the 4680 is not getting as much pound for pound efficiency. And again, just for fun, the latest version of the Model S with the 18650 cells is 186 watt hours per kilogram at the pack level. This reporting and the excellent charts are thanks to Cleaner Watt. He's still trapped in liminal space, but he's doing great work. So again, when examined under a microscope like that, things don't look very good for the new 4680 battery pack in its current form. And I keep saying that because we'll get there in a minute, but first, Let's pull back a little bit and compare these numbers to the macro environment, aka the bigger picture. General Motors is pushing hard to rival Tesla within the next three years as a leader in electric vehicle technology and production. And GM plans to accomplish that with their modular Altium EV platform. This is the battery technology rolled out in the new Cadillac Lyric and Hummer EV. It'll be coming soon to the Silverado EV pickup truck and eventually the entire range of GM vehicles will have a fully electric Altium powered equivalent. The modular pack can be loaded up with as many battery modules as the application requires. For example, the Hummer has a massive 200 kilowatt hour pack with two layers of battery modules stacked on top of each other. And the Hummer requires such a large battery because the pack level density of the Altium battery is a relatively low 160 watt hours per kilogram. You might remember that's more or less the exact same as the Tesla 4680 structural pack. But unlike the Tesla 4680, the Altium battery is not cutting edge. It's not even particularly new. This is just a standard off the shelf nickel, cobalt, manganese, and aluminum chemistry from LG, the same company that made the spontaneously combusting battery packs for the Chevy Bolt. And the pack architecture is the bog standard skateboard style platform that Tesla introduced back in 2012. It's a fine battery, but at the same time, this is just the same old, same old. And what brings us to the precipice of the next phase in our journey through Gartner's hype cycle, what is the upshot? Also wanted to give a quick shout out to our amazing Discord community. Here is our question of the week, and this was our favorite answer. And here is the meme of the week winner. Join our Discord community to participate next week through the link in the description below. So if we kind of stand back and look at where we are in the bigger picture, we have Tesla on one side trying to roll out this brand new thing that they literally just invented like a year ago. And on the other side, we have the rest of the EV industry sticking with the tried and true method. As of right now, the results that both sides are achieving are about equal. So where does this go in a few years time? What's the upshot? Well, the tried and true EV battery method has arguably hit a plateau. Even with all of the new electric cars coming to market over the past year, we haven't really seen any noticeable increase in range or efficiency. The only company that's really been able to push the envelope with current generation battery cells is Lucid, getting the air sedan over 500 miles of range is a great accomplishment, but that is a very expensive car that's only produced in a very limited quantity. It is not indicative of the broader market. While the Tesla 4680 pack architecture is still in an infant stage of development, it still has all of the future potential to level up and improve. This is something that Elon Musk and his chief of powertrain engineering, Drew Baglino, literally said themselves during a 2022 Tesla earnings call. When talking about the existing design of the Model Y battery pack, Elon said that he would give it a C grade within an A architecture. So what he's saying is that the potential is there within the design to be 
grade A. But as it stands, Tesla is only scoring a C. They're not realizing the potential. Then Drew Baglino stepped in to echo that sentiment, and he revealed that the structural pack they are working on for the Cybertruck is better, but still not taking full advantage of the architecture. Drew said that the Cybertruck pack would score a B grade. So the grade A 4680 structural pack is still out there. Tesla just hasn't quite figured out how to build it yet. And according to the limiting factor and his examination of the 4680 battery chemistry, there is still an apparent room for improvement where Tesla can squeeze more energy density from this cell design. So that brings us to the next phase of our journey, where we drag ourselves up from the trough of disillusionment and begin to scale the slope of enlightenment. This is going to be a tough climb, but this is our path to finding the middle ground. Halfway between expectation and despair lies the plateau of productivity, which I think is the point where we all get over ourselves and carry on with life. Obviously, we're not there yet. On December 25th, Tesla's official Twitter account posted that they had just accomplished a run of 868,4680 cells produced in a seven-day period, and they showed photos from two separate 4680 production lines the initial pilot plant in California, and the newly constructed cell production line inside Giga Texas. So again, going back to the number breakdown by Cleaner Watt in the Cleaner Condo, we can see that this is enough batteries to make 150 of the new Model Y packs per day, or 1,048 per week, which right now would reflect about one third of the total vehicle output capacity at Giga Texas. That also would add up to about 4 gigawatt hours per year of combined production capacity at the current rate, which again, Tesla told us back in September 2020 that they would be making 100 gigawatt hours worth of cells in 2022. They did not. They're not even close. And that's why we still find ourselves deep in the trough. Did Tesla overpromise and underdeliver? Absolutely. Did we in the Tesla community let ourselves get carried away with enthusiasm? Yeah, also yes. But the reality of the situation is that progress is happening. It's not happening as quickly as we had expected, but it does carry on nonetheless. And that's all that really matters. Innovation moves at its own pace, and there's not really much that you or me or even Elon Musk can do about it, regardless of how hard he tried to make things go faster. So in all of that, it's our job here to just continue reporting things as we see them hopefully getting better and better at recognizing those situations where we are looking at the world through rose-colored glasses and quickly remembering to put our regular glasses back on. I can't see without any glasses. It's, it's terrible. Anyway, let us know where you see things going with the 4680 battery cell. How long until progress finally moves up the slope to the plateau of productivity? Give it another year at least, maybe two? Theories down below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.